we welcome back Jackie Guzda, our media analyst, here now to discuss a word we hear a lot on the campaign trail, illegal immigrant. Welcome, Jackie. It's good to have you here. It's good to be here, Laura. Well, we're going to start specifically with one case. It's the Sergio Garcia case. Bring us up to speed. All right. Sergio Garcia just passed the California bar exam. Now, he wants his license to practice in the state, but there's a hitch. He's undocumented. Okay. Now, yeah. his father... Yes, his father... He was born here. Sergio was born in the United Well, his father brought him over father, here yes, as a baby. Okay, his yeah. father had legal papers over here and later became a naturalized citizen. Mm -hmm. So at the age of 17, Sergio wanted to become legal, and his father sponsored him. The court said, fine, your case is pending. That was 18 years ago. Why is this taking so long? It just is. Now, here's the thing. Sergio's using his 15 minutes of fame to draw attention to this problem. Is that he's saying to all these reporters, fine, you can have an interview with me. However, you cannot use the word illegal. Now, a New York Times reporter bailed on an interview because he needed to use that word. Well, what? I mean, other media organizations, they use the term. Sure. What, it, what's, what's the point? What yeah. What are you trying to... Is AP style book says we should be using the word. Uh, however, Society for Professional Journalists are saying, let's move it over to undocumented because, you know, it is a negative term. When I'm told I'm illegal, mm -hmm. when my group of peers is told that we are illegal, it, it creates kind of a shame in us. And in that sense, people can become hostile when they are treated that way. And on the other side of the fence, if I or someone is going to look at a group of people and label them as your illegals, your illegals, well, that puts that group of people below them and creates kind of a subhuman uh, population. So that's the effect that this labeling has on, it, on Yeah, people. that's what it does. Right, right. Well, let's switch gears then and talk about how this language is used on the campaign trails because you hear it a lot in this presidential election. We're going to hear a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what's the relationship between PACs and the candidates? All right, political action committees or PACs, uh, also called 527s. What that is, it's an organization that can take in money to support a candidate, cannot work directly with the candidate, but support them, support issues surrounding that candidate. Now, in 2010, Supreme Court ruled that corporations are people. People have free speech rights. So you can say, I love this candidate, I hate this candidate, whatever. Corporations can use money as their form of speech and give millions, uh, in some cases, billions of dollars have been raised to support PACs. And this just changes everything now. Right. And what we saw in the 2004 election, yeah. uh, swift voting, and how swift voting. negative terms can really affect a candidate. Look what happened there. Swift Vote Veterans for Truth came on with those ads, if you remember those. It took John Kerry, who was a war hero, decorated war hero with medals, and just trashed his reputation as a military man. Now, a lot of what those people said, the Swift Vote Veterans, was un, it was it was discredited, but it didn't matter because they got that message across, created doubt in the minds of the viewers, and Kerry lost the election. And because politics is perception, is there any way to fact check? Uh, oh, was, wonderful, yeah. <laughs> wonderful ways to fact check. I've used this in the last elections with my students; they had mm -hmm. a blast. Um, I invite you to look at factcheck.org. When you get an email that says, oh, Obama says that uh, we should eat all the babies or something like that, and people go, oh, this is terrible, he's a terrible man, mm -hmm. just send them to factcheck.org. Mm -hmm. And it looks at the different sayings the politicians have said and tells you the truth or not. Now, there's also another wonderful one called politifact.com. Mm -hmm. And they do the same thing, but they have a mobile app. You can download it for $1.99 just in case you want to have it in your hand at any given time. And it has a truth meter It will go from the truth in green all the way up to a burning red pants on fire. And you can tell if they're telling the truth or not. Because we are getting bombarded depending on what part of the country you're in. I was just recently in Florida visiting my family. Uh -huh. That's a swing state. Every time I turned on the TV, a political ad in New Jersey, where we're broadcasting from, we're not so much of a swing state. So you don't, right. you're not bombarded with as many ads. But I couldn't believe how many ads here we are midsummer already coming at you and you know somebody's watching are they tuning it out is something is it all sticking in are they just remembering the negative what what you know what's a, a, a voter to do influence 
its influence. And there's not much that the voter can do. I mean, you know, people go to work every day. They're busy. They're not just going to sit there and go, oh, I've got to check these facts. So all that information is coming in, whether it is truthful or not. And so we've just got to stay on top of it, check the facts, et cetera, and you know, give the populace objective news. So let's talk a little bit, going back to illegal immigrants, in this case, Sergio Garcia. Uh, what type of an impact is, is he making, is this case making? And I, is, it, is it playing into the presidential election? Not so much into the presidential election, but as I said, he's using his 15 minutes. He's calling attention to the use of the word illegal which I'm very happy about because you have media outlets who are pushing that word and it's creating this effect upon people who are like, ugh, you know, I wish they would describe me better because not every case is black and white. Not every illegal alien, immigrant, et cetera, is good or bad. You know, there's convoluted cases like Garcia's, and I think it's a good case to look at. And I guess the flip side is some people will say, well, I mean, if he's not here legally, then he is illegal, and is he manipulating the media? Well, perhaps he is, you know, but that's what's going on now. So, you know, hopefully truth and justice will prevail. Final thoughts as we round out this segment, as you're watching political ads, as you're, you know, watching this case unfold, 18 years, that's un yeah. unbelievable. Um, for those out there, you know, voters, people watching this, uh, you know, how do you become the most informed, knowledgeable that you can, despite all these conflicting media reports that we get and the spin that we get from different organizations? You know, it's, it's almost as if we just can't take in the media anymore. We've got to be proactive about it. We've got to know who's giving us a skewed news. We've got to know where it's coming from. I guess if I could be a little retro about it, I'd say perhaps we should read more. But you read, read the, yeah, read. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because there are so many different sources you can get your news from. That's right. It can be overwhelming. So just the more you read, the more informed you become. That's right. Right. Yeah. All right. And then again, could you go over uh, that fact check uh, information again? If you of want course. To yeah. Factcheck.org. It's run by the Annenberg Foundation. You can look them up. Also, politifact.com. And as I said, you can download that app and have it in your iPhone or your Android at any given time and check the lies. Question for you. How do you know that a politician is lying? He's not talking? Their lips are moving. <laughs> Their lips are moving. That's it. All right. All right. I knew it was something like that. Okay. Yeah, good. Thank you so much for being here. Great. Thank you, Laura. Always a pleasure.